I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with Justin Camps, who is the music supervisor for the second season of Bridgerton. And J Justin, just for people who maybe don't understand the concept of music supervision, can you explain, you know, what basically that job entails? Yeah, for sure. So uh, as a music supervisor, you are involved in like every aspect of music on a production. Um, you could be starting as early as pre-production before there's even a script and people are just working with outlines. Uh, and then you can continue on all the way until the project is airing and sometimes afterwards, uh, you know, if you're maybe you're working on a soundtrack or something that's going to follow after the series airs. But yeah, so you're involved in, um, you know, not only pitching songs for certain sequences, you're also involved in licensing. Uh, sometimes you're involved in, you know, hiring musicians to perform on set. Uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much almost everything <laughs> music related. Yeah. So I actually want to want to talk about about one of those particular aspects, because Bridgerton is one of those shows that actually does have, you know, musicians within certain scenes. And so and so how what what is your involvement with that kind of situation? Yeah, well, uh, on Bridgerton, um, since, you know, the the show shoots in the UK, uh, we actually have an onset music supervisor, uh, Sarah Bridge, who uh, helps to coordinate all of the, uh, you know, onset activities. So like hiring the musicians. So what we'll do is um, I'll be involved in helping to, um, you know, let's say there's going to be a, a garden party or something, and and we've got like uh, the need for a string quartet playing there. You know, I will be involved in pitching uh, options for that sequence, uh, sorting out sheet music and getting all the, you know, wave files and everything over to, to the UK. Um, and Sarah then will be involved in hiring all the musicians and making sure that everyone's there when they're supposed to be day of shooting and, and dealing with all the logistics there. So yeah, since, since I'm just based in LA here, I, I don't make it over to set in the UK. <laughs> so she, she's there handling all of that on, on Bridgerton. And she does a great job. She's awesome. Um, you know, when, when it comes to a show like Bridgerton, you know, because of the, it's a period piece with sort of this anachronistic, you know, kind of soundtrack to a certain extent. And so where does your process begin in terms of, you know, deciding what to pitch and, and what kind of music you, you want in the season? Yeah, uh, I mean, very early on, sometimes before scripts are even out, um, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll be in discussions with our choreographer, Jack Murphy, um, regarding, you know, the dances that are going to be coming up in the episodes, because that's kind of what, you know, gets planned er very early on, because he needs to get a head start on planning the choreography. So initially, we'll be looking at these uh, string quartet covers based on uh, their tempo and key signature and more of like, the, you know, the feel and fit for the dances that he has planned for each ball. Um, so that'll sometimes be like, yeah, like I said, before scripts even come in or as the scripts are coming in, we'll be like focusing on that first. Um, and then as things progress, once the show is shot um, and it's into post and, you know, the scenes are being edited together, that's when we start to consider other things for those scenes where maybe what worked for the choreography now doesn't work like necessarily thematically as we're looking at the episode as a whole and what's going on with the characters. So that's when we'll start bringing in like, okay, what, what like themes are we trying to express here? What, what are our characters feeling? Like what songs can we put to that to kind of like match their emotions and match what's going on in the episode? You know, the first season, you know, kind of was kind of this zeitgeist moment. So does that coming on, you know, kind of in the second season as the music supervisor, um, how did you look back on the first season and how did the first season have any, did, or did it have any input into, into where you wanted to go with the second season? Yeah, I mean, the, definitely the first season, you know, uh, the first season established the sound of the, you know, string quartet covers. And since it was such a success when the show came out and like, you know, it, the vitamin string quartet like blew up and that whole thing was a phenomenon. Uh, it definitely made things, uh, you know, made things more clear for season two as far as like, okay, we really want to like really lean into these string quartets now and like maybe try to put them in some places where we might not have the first season, where they might not have the first season and just try to you know, find room for more of them because it was such a success that they wanted to kind of double down and 
I, I don't know if I, I might have just said that exact the same thing. <laughs> um, I'm repeating myself here, but yeah, they they wanted they they wanted to you know have more covers this season, and so we found you know more places throughout the throughout the episodes, and some episodes like had three covers, like a couple episodes with three covers each, and and um, it was just a great opportunity because there was so much more. Uh, interest in the second season once the you know first season came out and we were mostly just using vitamin string quartet now suddenly season two there's all these people interested in creating new string quartets for us and and uh you know wanting to explore different uh you know kind of styles of string quartets and stuff so i thought that was a really interesting opportunity that we had in season two how do you balance you know because it, it they're in in lesser hands i think the novelty could take over the drama. Uh, mm -hmm. And so how do you navigate that kind of tricky water of making sure you're picking songs that maybe aren't just like, oh, hey, look at this kind of cool pop hit that we're gonna put in here and really focus on the drama. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what the collaboration with, uh, you know, uh, the showrunner Chris Van Dusen and the producers really come into play where, you know, we're not we're not just like, oh, let's just slam songs in wherever, like, you know, let's let's really make them have meaning. And and that that's where, you know, um, Chris Van Dusen has, you know, strong opinions on on, on what on what he wants the you know, to express with the characters in the show and everything. So, yeah, that's where we have, you know, we have meetings uh like spotting sessions where we sit and look at the the moments that we're going through in this in the episodes and decide you know if what we have in there right now is working or we need to try something different um and that that's really where it comes in you know because the the writers and the you know showrunner are really involved in those decisions so that we're not just like slapping on songs just to have a pop cover for fun you know <laughs> But they are so much fun, though. <laughs> they are fun, yeah. They can be fun, but they also need to have some meaning, yeah. <laughs> so were there were there any particular choices this season that maybe caught you off guard in terms of how they ended up as the final product? Um, well, there was a... That's a good question, you know. Um, I think uh, one of the more interesting ones for me uh, that was, like, something new for the show was the cover of uh, Kabi Kushi Kabi Gam uh, that Chris Bowers did. Um, that one was really cool because, you know, like, and it kind of went through a whole process because originally it was going to be more of like a interpolation with his score. And then everyone was loving it so much that it turned into a full blown cover uh, of that song in there. And I just loved the, I, I love that everyone was working to have like an opportunity to like increase the South Asian representation in, with that moment through music. Um, and then, uh, you know, I don't know. I just really loved like the Alanis Morissette cover as well. That was one that I had, you know, sent over to the show thinking like, oh, this is such a unique take on the song. And, and I just thought that it works so well in that like, you know, super dramatic moment uh, between Kate and Anthony where they're making all these, you know, important decisions about whether to move forward with the uh, you know, relationship and everything. And it's so dramatic. And I just thought it worked really well uh, in, that, in that moment. And I'm just glad that everyone was able to you know, discover and hear the song in that way. I, I, I remember uh, thinking about, you know, like say like the pink, the use of mm -hmm. What About Us, or even the use of, of Nirvana, you know, you, you, some, of the, some of the styles, it, they cover, so, the originals cover so much territory. Um, do you do you hear something in the songs that is it a, just a thematic thing or is there something even instrumentally that goes that says to you oh this might actually work yeah i mean like well for the nirvana track you know that that one um is interesting because it's a little bit more like on the aggressive side obviously you know uh the, for most of the most of the string quartets we have you know they're kind of more flowing and, and this one uh you know the, the sequence itself uh, necessitated something with a little bit more energy and aggressiveness because it's kind of this like fast cut together montage of, of uh, you know, Anthony going through and interviewing all these potential matches and kind of like crossing them off and just showing, showing how stressful his day is with all the family work and this and everything. And so, you know, that's, that's a, that cover by the vitamin string quartet of stay away is like something that you couldn't just use anywhere like it wouldn't that wouldn't probably make sense over like a ball entrance or a ball dance or something so that that there where it's like a very uh, up-tempo aggressive uh cover 
is something where like, yeah, we heard that and it made more sense because that was how the scene was planned to be set and they wanted to use a string quartet cover there. I, I, I remember when I saw Material Girl, uh, when I heard Material Girl, at first I thought, God, that is so on the nose. But then, it, then you think to yourself, oh, well, well, but, but there is actually more to that song that thematically fits in with that moment of the first ball. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like uh, they, they arrive there and it's just everyone is like pointing out all the different suitors and how much they're worth and what kind of like, you know, upbringing they had. And it just makes sense that like, you know, everyone's there, you know, not necessarily that everyone's there like as a material girl or whatever, but they're all there looking at how much these people are worth and like, how can they elevate my status or whatever. So I just thought that, you know, it was on the nose, but the whole proceedings of like those balls and like getting out there to, to match in this way is just kind of like over the top in general, you know, as far as how we think of, you know, courtship and stuff nowadays. Um, what, is, what is your collaboration with, with Chris Bowers? I've spoken to Chris several times and, and he always kind of, you know, brings whatever he does musically really always comes down to moving the story along. What's your collaboration with him? Yeah, so uh, my my main collaborations with him are on the covers that he created for this season. You know, he, he did one cover uh, for season one and, you know, we wanted to get him more involved on creating some like complete original covers for uh, for Bridgerton this season. And, um, you know, I, I don't collaborate with him much on the actual score because, you know, he is like, you know, He's number one at that. I, I don't I don't have any notes for him. You know, I'm like, I'm not sitting there going, Chris, like, what if you did this? You know, um, uh, so so we really get a chance to collaborate when it comes down to uh, Material Girl and Kabi Kushi Kabi Gam, where, you know, we discuss, uh, th they'll send over like a demo of what he's working with and we can, you know, kind of discuss what it sounds like and if it's working. Um, and then we kind of go back and forth on that uh, until we've got the, the final recording that's going to be in the, in the scene. So I'm, I'm glad, you know, that we get that opportunity because he's such a great person to work with and, and it's fun to collaborate in that way and looking forward to doing more next season, hopefully. You know, the, the, the interesting thing to me about the use of just, you know, covers in this kind of, you know, anachronistic way, why do you think it works so well? Uh, you know, I just think it gives, you, you know, it gives the audience something to immediately connect with. Uh, you know, it's like, um, I, I love I love the thought that the audience is thinking like, oh, you know, these characters are listening, or, you know, <laughs> in the world, potentially hearing these songs that I also love. And, and you have such a strong connection with that song that when you hear it, you're immediately like pulled into the sequence. And 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 also people, you know, I hear all the time people just like have fun trying to figure out what the cover is while they're watching the show. And it's almost like a little game as they go. I through. do that. Yeah, see, do that. exactly. <laughs> so. I think it's just, you know, it's 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 just like a it's an interesting twist on songs that you know that you've heard a million times and just getting to kind of like rediscover them and re-fall in love with these 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 songs in a new way, I think really like just connects with people. And it's just something, you know, it's something that you can endlessly that fans like can endlessly listen back to and just just replay these moments, uh, you know, it, uh, from the show that they love over and over again. And I think that's why they really take off with, with the soundtrack and everything. I also think that, I also think, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I also think it actually highlights some of the musicality that is in some of these pop songs mm -hmm. that when you, you know, create them as a, as a classical track, there's, there's a lot more musicality in it than I think a lot of people are aware of. Yeah, for sure. Like, it, you know, some, it, it, you know, sometimes it really, you, you, you know, you take out the lyrics and everything and you really just get to focus on and distill down to the actual like melody and music of that song. And, you know, not that the original recordings, it loses all that stuff, but there's so much going on with the original recordings and, and you're listening and you're like singing along and hearing the <laughs> lyrics. And so now you just get distilled to the like actual, like, you know, just the chords and music. And it's, you know, you, it's often done in just such a beautiful way that people, I think people really like love to hear those new versions of the songs. I have to ask this just as from a fan perspective, uh, uh, dancing on my own, how? <laughs> where, did that, where did that come from? Because I, that's one of those I knew immediately. Oh yeah. 
Well, that one was that one was in there very early on, uh, and it was one that Chris, you know, and everyone just loved for that sequence because you know it's just like uh, felt like it really spoke to the like bittersweet situation that's going on at that point when you know this is like the first time Anthony and Kate you know get to dance together, and sparks have already been flying, and the song is all you know kind of about like how you're you know just kind of watching someone that you love with someone else and you're now you're going to be dancing on your own and and so even though they were dancing together in that moment there's still that feeling of like we can't really do this the way we want to uh you're you're you know you're you're busy publicly courting you know my sister and everything so i just felt like you know that was just a great uh had a lot of great meaning for that moment and then just the just the tempo of it and everything worked great for the for their dance sequence um, and just very sweeping and everything. I I think yeah, lots of people have really been loving that one <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> um, how does how does working on on something like Bridgerton differ from say some of your other work? Is there a different you know because it is so big and because it is so you know the Netflix factor of it and because of its success. Um, does that create a different type of pressure for you? Yeah, I mean, I definitely felt, uh, you know, taking over from 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 Alex uh, Patsavas, who did season one and and was nominated for an Emmy for season one. I was very, you know, you know, she, she's like my mentor. And I and so I was like very nervous taking over and wanting to, you know, live up to fan expectations because, yeah, the first season was like, you know, the biggest thing. Uh, I had seen in a long time uh, as far as like fan reaction and just the press and everything around it. And so I definitely felt a lot of pressure going into season two to make sure that I, uh, you know, live up to what everyone was hoping for. Um, so I hope I did that. But, you know, other than that, it's like, you know, it's interesting being on Bridgerton because it's such a it's such a focused um it's such a focused pool of music. Like we're we're really mostly just looking at these like court, you know, classical string quartet pop covers. And on other projects, you know, there'll be a lot of variety of stuff. So I kind of love that I can just like really hone in on finding like these great string quartet cover recordings and just like, you know, work with everyone at Shondaland to like make sure that they are, you know, in meaningful spots throughout the season to create the most impact for, you know, fans and for the story. Well, I think no worries about that. You, you, <laughs> you done good. Um, <laughs> everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Emmys and stay tuned for interviews with more contenders throughout the season. Uh, Justin Camps from Bridgerton, uh, tons of fun talking to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. 